Welcome to Commercial Break, and I'm Rebecca Michael from The Stream, The Stream, The Stream TV. And I'm here with Mike Beatrice in the IM chat room talking to you guys. There's a lot of new people here tonight. I've been sitting in front of Justin, and oh, nice guy135 is here. Are you really a nice guy? Because that's what I've been wondering. Um, I want Before we even start, I really, because it's so many people, I want to give you guys a shout out. Hello, Senor Shutter, Anastasia Fall, Limby, Simpsons King, Simpsons King, Shano, Dicknam, Assassin 70, Ruth Rutherford the Brave, Piite, Piston Hammer, Film Fan 28, Telemundo 714, Timer FX, and I want to say hello to uh, Groove Grass Boy, oh, Jizz Muffin. Gosh, that's gonna, you gotta come up with something better than that. A Carol 90, Whimsy Parker said, A Parkell, Doug Funny 606, welcome to Commercial Break, your show all about advertising, marketing, and commercials behind the scenes, what it takes to make a commercial. Advertising's all around us, people. It's everywhere we go. We're capitalists here in America, or at least some of us are. Um, Mike, what are you, Mike? Mike? Yes. You're just a sports analyst is really all you are. That's really all there. I am, a secretary and sports analyst. Yes. What are you doing over there? I we uh, Out of the gate, we have a number of questions. We have a number of people. The chat room is going by like light speed. I know. And we have a number of IMs with adjectives. It's actually the busiest it's been in a long time. Yeah, it's insane. And I, I thank uh, Matt Corboy for that. Yeah, cool. yeah it's totally Matt. <laughs> it's his uh, Kaborka. <laughs> Wait, what? So, Mike. Uh, any anyone harassing me yet? I did my hair Jenna like tonight. Do they like it? Because they always like it, Rebecca. They love that you are Rebecca Hayes. They refuse to call you anything else. Uh, although Loyal Casanova did call me uh, super cute, fresh in the pre-show. Well, Loyal Casanova, that's not so loyal to me, is it? If you're hitting on Mike now. No, I, I'm just now wondering if Loyal Casanova <laughs> is male or female. It's probably a code name. For Either us. way, complimentary. I'm you know it's totally cool. I'm just wondering which way that adjective swings. Mikey, it's just, it's a code name for some super hot supermodel from New York City who God, likes it better you, be. Who loves the Red Sox, I bet, <laughs> and sports, and wants to talk sports all the time. Not That'd that lucky, Rebecca. Girl, right? It's right here, Mike, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited tonight because we have Matt Corboy in the house. Welcome him to commercial break. Uh, Jared, you want to maybe switch over to Matt so we can welcome him? I'm raising the roof over He's here. Nobody's paying room. attention. I love this guy. This guy is adorable, and he wore the right color for his background. He looks like it's Christmassy. It's very you got to coordinate. Festive. It's festivus for the was, rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> that was on it. last night. We love it. We're so excited you're here, you guys. Matt has been on like okay, just go to his IMDb right now and shoot that star meter right up because he has like three pages of credits. Um, he has been on all kinds of things. Um, he's known for about 18 episodes on The Shield. Also, he was in the pilot episode of ABC's Modern Family, which is the big runaway comedy hit of the year. And um, he will possibly be having a recurring role on that, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. He plays, in case you don't know if you've already seen the episode, he plays Josh, uh, who is this ridiculous character <laughs> that wears Ed Hardy from head to toe. Kind of like John Gosling from John and Kate Plus 8. Um, you know, those guy, L.A. guys that wear the rhinestones and I all that. Aspire to be John Gosling. He's a spy. <laughs> I hope not, because you seem happily married with a three-year-old. So, um, But before we get to all that, you guys, we do have some amazing deals for you. We have been researching deals of the week uh, since our show is about advertising and commercialization. Um, I found the most amazing thing. It's called Kids Meal, kidsmealdeals.com. And can we go ahead and take a look at their logo? It's uh, my first media clip here, Jared. Yeah, there you go. Kidsmealdeals.com. Okay, who, what, where, when, why not? Okay, I know the girl that started this company. She went to Ohio State with me. She's a dear friend of mine. Um, and she and her husband started this company a few years ago. And it's amazing. Like, if you have a kid or you have aunts, uncles, whoever you know who has kids, I don't know if you guys know this, but at a lot of restaurants, kids eat for free or they get a discounted meal. So if you go to their website, you can find out all about it. You just put in your zip code and it lists all the restaurants in your area where there's amazing deals for kids. And so you get a discount because if you go the night that they're running that deal, then you don't have to pay for your kids to eat, which is really, Matt. Love it. Free food, I'm in. <laughs> I'm right? In. Yeah, it costs nothing, I'm there. And I went to the site and one of the restaurants is Denny's. And everybody loves Denny's because everybody loves the Grand Slam. And, and moons over, over my Miami. Miami. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say next. Is a, moons over my hammy. 
So um, we just wanted to make sure we plug that because it's a really great thing. And also, if your favorite restaurants aren't listed yet, you can get a packet from them, go to that restaurant, and if that restaurant registers, you get money from kidsmealdeals.com. You get a referral fee or whatever. So go check it out, you guys, uh, and tell everyone you know who has kids because people need, it's a recession and restaurants are hurting and they're closing and they need help. Okay, so moving on to the next daily deal from eBay. Uh, where the Wild Things Are book is on eBay right now as the daily deal for five bucks, you guys. Five bucks. I just paid thirteen ninety nine for this book. You got robbed, and it comes with free shipping. So go get it for your kids or whoever. Christmas, it makes a great gift. Um, and those are my deals of the week. And I think Mike has some info for you guys as well in sports. Mike? I do. And... Uh, uh First of all, I want to say, Rebecca, Loyal Casanova thinks that you were getting cuter by the day. Oh, Loyal. And then somebody, and I forget who, because not, the, really the chat room is warp speed, but they love that you have the white trim inside the neckline. Without getting too personal, they enjoyed that. Okay. I'm just, all I do is report what the chat room says, Rebecca. I know, that's your job. Uh, do you want to hear my little uh, sports tip? Yes, I do. Uh, I think the most important issue in sports right now, uh, chat stars, is whether or not Brett Favre is actually going to buy that television. We've been watching this. We have been watching this for weeks. He's in the Sears. Yep. He's staring at the TV. And there's the guy. And you're like, going to buy it? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic because we do a whole pricing thing and it's on sale. Yeah, I don't know. And then then on Monday night when, when Brett was playing the Packers in uh, Minnesota at the, uh, is it the Metrodome? At the Metrodome. Uh, they did the extended version where he stays all night. They have the cleaning crew. And I think this could be a narrative all season long. I want to see him there. I want to see him make decisions and interview the cleaning staff, and then we'll see what happens. But I think this is really an insight into Brett Favre because we all know sort of that Brett Favre betrayed Green Bay and went to Minnesota. Yeah. But see, what you don't know is that by being in Minnesota and shopping at Sears, he's betraying Best Buy because Best Buy's corporate headquarters is in Minneapolis just minutes down the road and from the Metro. Target, Target's and Target's are too? in Minnesota see, too. See, he's just, mm. he's mm. the worst. So I want to see this whole thing play <laughs> out. I show. want to see a blowout in his face. And I want to see a counter commercial by Best Buy when he finally returns to Green Bay and, and plays in Green Bay against the Packers in a, a few weeks. I have it marked on my calendar. Okay. I think that'll be good. I have a challenge for you, Mike. Uh -oh. I think you should shoot a commercial based on Brett's commercial and do a funny little spoof and we'll show all your best friends in the right. chat room. By the way, Doug Funny 606 I am hot. Okay, because I saw what you wrote and I gave you a shout out and you're telling them I'm not hot? That is so rude. Boo! Boo. You're, and Doug, guess what? If I'm not hot, you're not funny. <laughs> you're not funny. Okay, so I want to give a shout out to Piite, Piston Hammer, Film Fan 28, Amp 88, 79, oh, I, did I already say Timer FX and Telemundo? I'm sorry. Uh, bottom, how you doing? Pantera, be still my beating heart. Drink Moxie, General Awesome Tumor 20, I love you. And uh, Agony, Greg, uh, Craig J. Hayes, the only person who uses his real name in the chat room. <laughs> and Holy Terry shit. Pie, how you doing? Montero 22, gay for pay. That's bizarre, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, and anyway, moving on, it's all about Matt. It's all about Matt, it really is. Uh, because I want you guys to kind of get a preview of where this guy's been around. Uh, you're going to recognize him. Let's go ahead and take a look at this reel of him. This is Terrain Wreck. We are down to six, and as they say where I grew up, aloha. And welcome to the Professional Poker Tour. I'm Matt Corboy. That's why we brought him here to Universal Studios Hollywood for a little game of bobbin for mice. Where real singles go on real dates real fast. I'm Matt Corboy. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying, Mike? I'm Matt Corboy, sitting in for Vince tonight. We're giving you ten balls, all right, buddy? All right, now, each strike, you roll down that lane right there. Now, Aaron says he's an open-minded dater, but admits he's a little afraid of women with tongue rings. Now, you're both winners in my book. And I have a big book, very, very, very big book. <laughs> now, I hate to admit this, but you are two for two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Foxwoods, you picked Johnny Juanda. Commerce, you picked Eric Linger, and they both won. I, on the other hand, am 0 for 2. All right, girls! It is head shaving time! Tag team style! Come on, tell us your sob story. And if you've got the dare, we've got your dollar. Remember, it only takes two minutes to fall in love. Thanks for watching, and remember, these are professionals. Do not try this at home. We'll see you next week. Hello!
There's more to come. There always is. That's right. Don't try that at home because you'll lose all your money. <laughs> Unless you're a professional, unlike me, who's not. Although every time I play poker, because I never play, I seem to be the only one who wins. It's weird. It's like beginner's luck thing just keeps repeating itself. You should go to Vegas tomorrow with that. <laughs> make tons of money. I'm sure my parents would think that that was a great idea, considering I owe them some money. Um, that's a whole nother show, people. Um, Matt, you've done a lot of hosting. I have. It's like insane. Yeah. And you do a lot of voiceover work, too. I do. I sort of fell into the hosting thing. I, uh, I was performing at Improv Olympic out here, and there was uh, these producers came and saw a show. And they invited all everyone who was in the show to come and audition for this high school kids game show called Crossword. And, uh, and I actually wasn't in town for the auditions. And a buddy of mine, Dennis Gubbins, Dennis. Dennis. Uh, yeah. he, uh, he, he actually went to the audition. And after he got done with his audition, he's like, ah, you guys should really hire my friend Matt Corboy. <laughs> and, uh, and I got a call. They're like, listen, we're going to wait for you to get back. And I went and auditioned for it and got it. And that sort of got me an agent and got the whole hosting thing rolling. Okay, that's a really good friend. Yeah, what a, yeah, right? I don't know one person in Hollywood who would do that for somebody. It's, yeah, it's crazy, right? It's always me, me, me. And he yeah. was like, you know what? My buddy Matt's the I it's hope not that me. his karma came back to him on that one. Um, and you've done a ton of commercials, too, in addition to all that work, which I, we'll be talking about. But all right. yeah. But yeah. We, how many Super Bowl commercials? Uh, I think I've been in four Super Bowl commercials. Was Which the Honda is, one a Super Bowl as well? It, it was. I was in a okay. Honda Super Bowl spot. Uh, and then two, a Budweiser and a Bud Light. So maybe three. Three, three Super Bowl commercials. The coolest thing about having a Super Bowl commercial is that uh, your, your phone tells you that you have a text message. And then you open it up and you have 117 text messages that all came through at the same time from all your friends across the During country. During the Super Bowl. Yeah. Which is kind of Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. I have it queued up. Um, this was for Budweiser. You guys are going to remember this. What Was this last year or the year before? Oh, this, this is was, on the roof. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Um, this was very popular. Let's go ahead and take a look, Jerry. Thanks for cleaning the gutters. Anything for you, hon. Cleaning the gutters. Yeah, I'm realigning the satellite dish. It's a good one. Hey, it's fixing a leak in the roof. Even better. No, I'm really fixing a leak. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. I'm good. Casey, you're lucky you didn't have to do that part. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have, I didn't have. You know what's funny, that, that last, uh, that was a set where they built of that living room, and they literally built it in the street. We shot at a cul-de-sac oh, here wow. in LA and they built this, and he was they, they, crazy. They had the crane and they built this little rig and so he like, this stuntman fell through and then the, the actor pops up, you know, from behind the thing. And then that was a foam um, uh, toolbox. So Budweiser commercials are just huge budget, obviously. If they oh, built a whole huge. set, yeah. like that's, that's I've yeah. never had anyone at commercial I, break before say that a whole entire set was built around their commercial. Yeah, that's it was crazy. crazy. And I think it took, I definitely was a two-day shoot for that little commercial. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, I should, should we talk about this? I had, a, I had another Super yeah. Bowl commercial. I had another Super Bowl commercial that was on last year. Yes. Uh, it's the Budweiser Crabs. Have you seen it? The crabs come and they worship the cooler full of beers. Yeah, I remember that one. And that was uh, that was one of those things. Uh, there was two commercials that I auditioned for. One where I got to play an astronaut. And who doesn't want to be an astronaut? Exactly. And I really wanted to be an astronaut. And the other one was, uh, you're on a beach with these crabs. And I was like, nah, uh, I'd rather be an astronaut. But you're you know? hardly in that one. So you got oh. like a free vacation and no, then not like just no a, work. Yeah, not <laughs> just a free vacation, but they were like, oh, okay, we got good news and bad news. The, the bad news is you're not the astronaut. But the good news is you you got one of the commercials and uh, we're going to fly you down to Cancun, Mexico, uh, and then two hours south of Cancun in Tulum, Mexico, which is one of the most amazing little towns in the world uh, for a week. Wow, that's yeah. so cool. And I had, awesome. a, I, had a, I had a crying three-month-old at home at the time, so it was... Um, so you actually got sleep for a week. Yeah, I actually could sleep. Hey, Mikey, I'm sure they're blowing up over there. What's going on? They do. We have a ton of questions. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout-out to Video Gamer. Uh, singing in the Dark, she's my sister. Uh, Rutherford the Brave, Pig Sticker. And Pantera, as you mentioned, is back in the room, so we Yay. love having Pantera there. Been a long time, Pantera. Uh, if a video showed up, we'd have the whole band back together. A video's watching Gaff again right now. He's going to watch us later. What? Yeah. He yeah. took sides. Well, video took sides against the family. He did. He's I told dead him. To me. I told him he's dead. We do have <laughs> awesome questions. There's so many questions. Um, timer effects raises a good point. When you do beer commercials, do you actually get to drink the beer? And then Craig wants to know on the poker tour, 
Did you learn any tips or tricks about playing poker? Uh, I tell you, first of all, uh, about the beer commercial. No, they they could care less that you're in a beer commercial. They're not like, hey, you did such a great job. Here's a case of Bud Light. Why don't you go enjoy yourself? Like they don't do that. Uh, or I shot a Titleist commercial one time for a ball that hadn't come out yet, and I, it was the Titleist NXT with John Cleese, and um, and I was like, oh, it's so great. How do I get a ball? And the guy was like, no, we're not gonna give you any balls. And then the the prop guy was like. I stole one ball for you, so I got off the set one ball. But you don't get to drink the beer. But the the Cancun, Mexico shoot uh, ended up being nine days. We were down uh, in Tulum, Mexico, and they shipped down 27 cases of Budweiser to Mexico just for everyone to enjoy while right. we we're sitting on the beach shooting these commercials. So, Matt, let me ask you, um, since you've done one for Bud Light and one for Budweiser, mm -hmm. so that doesn't they don't care that you were already in one, they just bring you back, or they, do they not know? Like They don't, don't tell them. I won't. I was in both. Mom's the uh, word. No, the, the rule is in, in the commercial world, like uh, I can do uh, Budweiser, but I can't do Coors uh, at the same time. But they also don't want you, even though uh, Anheuser-Busch owns Bud, Bud Light, they also own, um, you can't do like Michelob. Yeah. They own Michelob, but so they, they wouldn't want you doing, doing a Budweiser Bud and, and a Michelob, Michelob spot. Right. Yeah, but it, but Bud and Bud Light, sort of like Coke and Coke Light. Right? Yeah, Coke, yeah, Diet Coke. Uh, so, but the second half of that question was on the poker tour. Yes, I learned so much about poker. It was my whole world was poker, poker, poker. I was a, a decent player before I got the show, right. uh, but I sort of BS'd my way. I, I went to the audition, and I had I, I watched. 12 hours a week of the World Poker Tour when it first came out. I was addicted to the show. Mm -hmm. So I got there and they were like, oh, you know about poker? I'm like, yeah, what do you need to know? Oh, the final table of the uh, Doyle Brunson uh, Five Diamond Classic? Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, John Juanda, Eric Lindgren. Uh, and so I do name everybody who was at yeah. the table and I knew all about them. So I got the show. And, um, but I was more of the color guy. But I learned so much about poker. I, I played in the, in the World Poker Tour Invitational and out of 333 people, I got 16th place. Wow, that's great. Yeah, it was kind of fun. That takes people years. That's yeah. incredible training. Uh, what a great gig for a guy. I mean, oh, we yeah. had the Burgwood guy here who does the Allstate commercials. Yeah, yeah. Which Mike, I Andrew. Was, yeah, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. And Mike, I was going to ask you, uh, will he be at the USC game? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to guess they send him the most of the Bowden games. Although oh, I think okay. they, I think usually to save money they shoot it here at the Coliseum. Uh, so I don't know. But I did see. Uh, there was a recent uh, a college football ad that had Kirk Zipfel, who's been on here. Mm -hmm. He was doing a uh, Bud uh, the Bud Light tailgating yep. ad, and they shot that here in, uh, at the Coliseum. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, I remember that mm -hmm. one, yeah. Um, Bergwood, uh, what was I going to say about him to do with what you were doing? I can't, I can't awesome remember. Awesome poker. Oh, yeah. something about the poker thing. Like, it was, oh, I know what it was. He just learned so much, like, yeah. through shooting that whole thing. Like, he had to learn everything about every team, which he knew a lot already, but... I mean, it was kind of like when he went to the audition, he made sure he talked about the fact that he grew up outside of Iowa Stadium and he was obsessed <laughs> with, you know what I mean? He made yeah. sure, just kind of like you went in and you focused on the things you did know. Yeah. And it, it really helps you, I think, when you do that. Uh -huh. So it makes For a big sure. difference. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, speak to what you know about and yeah. BS the rest. And BS the rest. Yeah. Fake it till you make it, exactly. as they say. Mike, one more before we hit the next commercial. Absolutely, but we just have breaking news, Rebecca. What? Uh, apparently, your sister, Robin, Michael, Mm -hmm. is uh, watching in Stickham. Uh, she's being encouraged to switch over to Justin, but right now she's in Stickham with Fa and Dying Breed and Celestina and Emperor 10 and Syrup. Uh, but whatever chat room she decides on, she's here tonight watching you. Because she's not allowed to talk right now because she can only type because she has laryngitis and a sore throat and she was in the emergency room last night. <laughs> Really? So this, she's probably laid up in her bed right now on her laptop. Oh my goodness. Yes, in the state of Florida. Hello, Robin. How are you? Hope you're feeling better. I'm glad you're in Stickum because I don't have Stickum in front of me. And um, Stickum, I apologize to you. I don't get to give you guys shout outs, but Mike does because I don't see your names. But thank you for tuning in, you guys. I just want to thank you for that. And also remember, uh, you can go to the Epilepsy Foundation, the stream.tv slash give anytime t tonight or tomorrow. And, uh, give to the charity that we're running right now. Okay, so we've got another clip of the wonderful Matt Corboy, because he's a commercial genius, and this one is for Wild Wings, and this one was very well known. So let's see what So here we are in the fourth quarter, no time left, and the touchdown is under review. Hey guys, what do you think? We're not ready to go yet. Is there any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. 
and we're going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Oh, my. And they were like, you can't eat the wings either. And you can't have any wings. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> no, we got free Buffalo Wild Wings for lunch. It was awesome. But then after that, you weren't ever allowed to eat they them again. They were like, you are never <laughs> because allowed Because you that. made a commercial. <laughs> no, it seems like the theme, like with all our... Um, all our stars that come in here that are in all these campaigns, like they're like, no, I didn't get any uh, Febreze, and no, I didn't get any Allstate insurance, and no, the girl from Progressive, you know, she can't, of course she has Progressive insurance, yeah. but she can't get a discount because it's legal. So like nobody ever gets anything, but Wild Wings fed you. They fed us lunch uh, the day that we shot. It was funny because everyone, uh, everyone was like, where is there a Buffalo Wild Wings in LA? Did you fly somewhere to do this? And I'm like, no, no, it's just outside LA. You take the 10 freeway all the way to the 15 freeway, and then you take that seven miles south toward Mexico? I'm not sure where. And, yeah. uh, and so there is a Buffalo Wild Wings. There but is it, a it actually Wild is Wings. near and dear to my heart. I, I, as, as mentioned before from Mike, I went to uh, the great Colorado State University, home of the Rams, and, uh, and our bar in college was, back then was BW3s, Buffalo Wild oh Wings and Weck. We had that at Ohio State, yeah. BW3s. And you could order yeah. them and have them delivered and you could get them in any flavor you wanted or like exactly. hot, you know, hot, mild meat. Yeah, and they have a million flavors and they have uh, the pins of beers, sort of what they're known yeah. for. Yeah. And uh, I waited till I was 21 and then I had one of those. I liked it. Right, I liked, I liked sure beer. you waited till you were 21. And, uh, and so it, it meant a lot to me. And the woman, and it's kind of a small company. And so we got there and the woman was like, hey, we're really happy, you know, for Buffalo Wild Wings, happy to have you guys and I was like I'm happy to be here this is my this is our spot in college this is fantastic and uh, and she's like well we only shoot about two commercials a year uh, so you know it could be good news for you guys and that's why you America are seeing this commercial every commercial over break and over football. and over again um, I love that commercial and I think it's a perfect guy commercial I do why do I feel like they have one at LAX in oh, the, they could. You know, it's it's one of the fastest growing uh, I think chains they do. in I the think country. They, they have a place in LAX now. Yeah. I think it's near the JetBlue terminal. But I they swear do. it's a wings place, and I swear it's them, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going there right after the show. You know, <laughs> I, I almost didn't go to that audition. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, I'm so glad I did. It was it's one always of those, those ones. It's always like, yeah, Craig Colvin was the casting director, and, uh, and they called me in last minute straight to call back, and I was super busy doing something I'm like, I don't have time, but I, I have to go. How, what happens if you miss one? You know? Yeah, and, so, and then like, you don't get it. Not yeah. at all wearing what I was supposed to, you know, sort of showed up and was like, yeah, okay, uh, do you think I can go first? I got to get back to this thing I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, and then they, I did it and, and got it, and it's, uh, awesome. it's been a godsend. Yeah. Mikey. Yeah, uh, I just pulled up the Wild Wings, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings website. First of all, I've seen that commercial a million times and yeah. never put it together. It was you. Oh. <laughs> but I get news for you. Everybody here tonight is going to be watching football on Saturday and Sunday, and they're, they're going to tell all their buddies, that's that guy. Yeah. We saw him on this show on Friday, and uh, Crunchman was the first guy in the chat rooms to say it. Holy crap, it's that dude. <laughs> so you, that's that's an elite company to be in, Matt. Yeah. You're that dude guy now. That's nice. That's nice. awesome. I'll take it. Uh, and, and I confirm there is a local uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. There's uh, one in Burbank Ooh. and one in Torrance, uh -huh. which is near the LAX. Uh, we do have two questions. Um, these are really good questions. Um, somebody on a recent show mentioned that they on on set had a spit bucket. Mm -hmm. So Drink Moxie is wondering when you did the uh, Wild Wings ad if you actually had a spit bucket. And then totally separate question, um, Senor Shutter, fantastic question. Apparently looking up your IMDb, how do you like doing or how was doing the voiceover work on the Lilo and Stitch series? Ah. And do you like doing voiceovers? Ah, great! All fantastic questions. Uh, first of all, Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, one kind of neat thing is if you look closely at all the beers that are on the table, they all have a perfect head on every pin of beer. And that's because it is not beer. It's fake beer with a styrofoam cutout of foam that's put in the pin of beer. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so they all look like rubbers. And, uh, and we didn't actually eat. We weren't allowed to touch the food. Don't eat the Wild Wings. We weren't allowed to touch the food on the set. So I did not have to have a spit bucket. Uh, but I did shoot a KFC commercial uh, a couple years ago. And this poor girl uh, had to eat chicken from KFC all day long. And she was like spitting it out, but she didn't like to spit things out of her mouth. And I was like, oh, well, she liked to swallow things, I guess. What? Um, OK, so what was the other question you asked me? Um, oh, Lilo and Stitch and voiceovers. Exactly yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I was born and raised in, in Honolulu, Hawaii. And so um, my, agents, I, I, uh, my agents were like, hey, listen, uh, Lilo and Stitch uh, 2, Stitch has a glitch is recasting for uh, the garage guy is his name. He's a big fat Hawaiian guy who plays the ukulele. 
And, uh, and so I went in and auditioned for it, and it was like, hey, Lilo, hey, Stitch, come here. I gotta talk to you guys for one second. I'm gonna tell you the story of Hiyaka. <laughs> and it's like this big, fat Hawaiian guy, you know? And I ended up getting the job, and, uh, and the great people at Disney uh, were like, okay, well, we're having this big Hawaiian guy who's coming in to do, uh, to do the voiceover. And I walk in like, hey, this little blonde guy, like, oh, how you oh, doing? That's so fun. And they were like, where's the, where's the guy that does the Hawaiian voices? And I was like, hey, over here, bro, what you guys doing? <laughs> and so, uh, so I did, the, I did the, the movie, and then they, they asked me to do the TV series, and Aww. so I did three episodes of the TV series. Uh, and then I also uh, did all the uh, background uh, voices for, for getting Sarah Marshall. Oh, cool. So all the Hawaii, it was funny because there was a giant Hawaiian guy, another giant Hawaiian guy, and then me, all standing there. And the two guys actually weren't from Hawaii. And so by the middle of the shoot for, for getting Sarah Marshall, they were like, yeah, you guys can go. And so I did all the big Hawaiian guy voices uh, just because I you know, have an authentic sort of Voice pigeon. Voiceovers are fascinating to me. I met a yeah. guy that was like half, half my height who does like every, he can imitate any famous actor, and he, that's what he does. He loops after like Robert De Niro shoots a movie and yeah. doesn't want to have to do the touch up stuff. He goes and that's what he does. You know, Jim Carrey doesn't do any of his, he doesn't do any looping, he doesn't do any, any extra voices, and there's a guy, his name's Brian Stepanek, and he makes a living. Oh, a good living. Being Jim Carrey. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. I don't really copy anybody's voice. Yeah, I, uh, you do more like characters and I, stuff. Yeah, well, I do a lot of narrating stuff. I, I narrate a, a bunch of different series on the DIY network. Uh, Sweat Equity is one of them. That's the main one that I do right now. Right. And uh, I love voiceover work. It's so much fun. It's so fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. Well, let's get uh, let's get a few more questions from Mike, and then I want to talk about Modern Family because I got some pictures cool. from the set of that. Mike? I don't have questions right now. Okay, I have comments, have uh, and some of them are good. Sure. Uh, in descending order. Uh, or ascending order. Pantera fan thinks it's awesome, Matt, that you hate KFC and that you swallow, and uh, <laughs> says that you are clearly a keeper. I don't. I just read what they. That's all I do. The girl um, swallow. The girl. Fa thinks if the chat rooms donate a significant amount of money for epilepsy, that I will rub my nipples, and uh, I don't want to. But if it's if it's a significant amount of money, I will make that happen. If that's what it takes to cure epilepsy. I will do whatever Wait, you want. Matt's doing it right now. <laughs> Matt does it for I'll free, do it for though. Free. That's, that's huh? Anything for charity. <laughs> so you should any, hold out for the cause, man. Me to rub my own nipple. Uh, but I have some compliments. First of all, Robin Michael in the chat room in oh. uh, Justin TV says that you, Matt, seem very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, and yes, it's true. He does. That's a lot. And then uh, Crunch uh, something. I just wrote down Crunch. Says that wow, you voiced Lilo and Stitch. That elevates you in their list of badassery. Ooh, wow. Which, wow. that's a huge compliment. Nice. That's a huge compliment. I like it. I, li I like to be upped in the badassery quotient, you know? That's kind of Everyone cool. wants to be called a badass. Yeah. Speaking of badass, you kind of play a, a guy who wishes he was a badass <laughs> on Modern <laughs> yep. Family. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pictures. That is uh, oh. Josh. <laughs> what do they call him? Josh what? Jo oh, well, Josh the soccer dad, officially, but uh, they were calling me Josh the douche. <laughs> Gosh. Let's, let's see. Who's that with you? So that's Eric Stone Street. Okay. He plays Cameron on the show. So, and uh, okay. actually one of my best friends in, in real life. And, uh, and a fantastic actor. And there's one more, I think. Oh, there you are. Look at those set. jeans. Look at those. This is, I hate the Ed Hardy thing. Oh. I mean, no offense, Ed Hardy. I, you know, it's just not my style for men. It's too... Flamboyant. Yeah, yeah. You should you should have heard the argument on set. It was I showed up with, like you know maybe like half that of of, of how much Ed Hardy there was, and the director Jason Weiner and uh, and one of the uh, one of the executive producers, one of the showrunners Steve Levitan, they had uh, they had a conversation about uh, I think we need to up his douchebaggery, <laughs> like his douchebaggedness needs to be higher. <laughs> so he was like, do you have any like like douchebag glasses, like big glasses? And I was so like, so is he like mean to the kids and stuff? He's like one of those soccer dads, or? Uh, well, no, he was proud. He said he's like, I'm Ryan's dad. When he was hitting on Sofia yeah. Vergara, who's lovely in real life. And so they're thinking about bringing him back, aren't they? Wouldn't or? that be nice? They should That'd bring be Josh so, back. You guys yeah. write into Modern Family and yeah. say we love Josh. They need we to have him. a soccer, uh, like a potluck picnic at Jay and Gloria's house, and uh, and and Josh, uh, you know, the soccer dad should be there. Yeah, giving, so giving you know Al Bundy some pointers on what to wear. <laughs> so they've been maybe throwing that around and mulling that on set. So let's hope for Matt that he gets to come back because that's a runaway hit and they've been picked up I think for the rest of the season. They have. They so got that their, would be a yeah, nice little their, gig for you. They're back nine order. Yeah, and so um, in 
You also played a major character on The Shield. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, The Shield uh, is one of the greatest television shows uh, I've ever seen. Yeah. I just was very blessed to be a part of it. Uh, it all started, I, I did a play in LA. Can you believe it? I did a play, a one act play, and one of the director's friends, his name is Sean Ryan, and he happened to create a television show called, uh, back then it was called The Barn, but it became to be known as The Shield. And he came to the play, saw me, and uh, we had a couple of beers afterwards. I had no idea who he was. I was like, hey, let me buy you a beer. You know, oh, you're one of Seth's friends. That's fantastic. You seem like a really nice guy. And uh, so we hung out a little bit, and then I got a call a few weeks later uh, that said, I have an audition for the pilot of The Barn. And I went in for a Walton Goggins character who plays Shane on the show. And uh, I felt like I did a great job. I didn't get the part, um, obviously. And, uh, and then a couple of weeks later, I got a call from Sean Ryan's office that said, we'd like to offer you uh, a part on our show. It's just one episode. And it's one line. Uh, it's for a cop on the show. And uh, you know, when Sean Ryan calls you and says, hey, will you be on my show? You say, yes, please. And so uh, I walked up and I said, um, a detective, I got a guy who saw our flyer, said he sold drugs to the victim earlier tonight. And that was my one line of my first episode of The Shield. And that turned into 19 episodes as Ray Carlson. Uh, oh, that's Officer Ray so Carlson great. I love show. that when yeah. something like that turns into this yeah. huge role, and you get. I saw some clips from it, and mm -hmm. it was a really good part. I mean, it was great for you. It was fantastic. They they ended up giving me a storyline. Uh, my my mom was like, I don't like you. I can't watch that show. Your your character yeah, you're is so mean. Yeah, you're kind of a jerk in it. Yeah. Well, I was like, well, you know, mom, I'm I'm not a, I'm not really a cop either. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a gay bashing uh, racist cop on the show. Yeah, everyone loves just, to play just one like, of those. Just like real life, yeah. No, it was, well, there was one scene where we had to, we gave this transvestite a blanket party in the back of a paddy wagon uh, of this, it is caught, this scene, and I got home and I couldn't sleep, like, you do the scene and it's just like this abs awful, awful thing that you're doing, you know, and, uh, and I got home and I, I couldn't sleep. My wife's like, what's the matter? I'm like, I can't sleep, I shot this scene, you know, it was fantastic to shoot this thing. And she's like, what'd you do? I was like, Oh, I beat the crap out of this transvestite in the back of this paddy wagon. You know, she's like, what's the matter with you? Like, it's acting. It's crazy. You're like, it's not real, yeah, Mom. Yeah, it's all fake, Mom. Hey, Mikey, <laughs> what's going on over there? There's some nasty comments about my anatomy, everything about me. Of course there is. Yeah. Uh, your poor Robin is purely just outnumbered in the chat room. Poor Robin. I've already implored them to lay off because, you know, it's you, it's family. Uh, but she's <laughs> holding her own. She's doing well. Uh, there are people imploring everybody to give at the stream.tv slash give, and that's cool. Um, uh, and then we did a, have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, everybody, once they realize you're on The Shield, Matt, yes. they love it. They're like, The Shield was a great show. They all loved it. Um, and I feel like there's only been a couple of shows on basic cable that have like take, taken off like that. And, and yeah. for my score marker, it, I think The Shield was really one of the first ones. And then that kind of took a downturn, and after that it was like Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Now it's Mad Men, uh, so I don't know what's next, but it just feels like there's all these good basic cable shows that have their time and they do really well and get a cult following. Yeah, so the it's Shield amazing really, that the yeah. Shield was one. It kicked it off. It really it made FX network. You know, yeah. uh, Sean Ryan single-handedly, I, I, I think, made that network what it is, and uh, he actually has a new pilot uh, called Terriers that they just picked up. Uh, it's oh, a great. series, yeah, for uh, for FX. And uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It was such a neat thing to be a part of. You know, I, I had shot, uh, I think, three or four episodes uh, before it had ever aired. And, uh, and so, you know, I don't know if I would have found it if I wasn't on it. And I found it and I was like, this is the greatest show on television. And I get to be a part of it. Like, it's one of those cool moments, you know. It's yeah. kind of like Modern Family. I honestly think Modern Family is the funniest television it's series very funny. on the air. Yeah. Yeah, people love it. It's yeah. like everyone's talking about it. And um, The Shield was critically acclaimed. I mean, and mm -hmm. it's such a great show for a guy to be on. It's, every guy wants to do a heavy cop kind of drama somewhere along the way. Definitely. And uh, that was definitely a show a lot of people watched and talked about for a very long time. I still feel like it's on. Well, it is on in syndication, but mm -hmm. I still feel like it just went away last year. So it's yeah, I get my 39 cent uh, syndication residual checks. 39 oh, yeah. cents. Oh, yeah. Big stuff. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, well, let's take a look at your Grape Nuts uh, piece here. This, guys, this was really quick. This was a series. If you guys remember, Kirk Zipbell was on. He was in the same series. They're friends. They were in it together. It's for Grape Nuts. It's all over the Internet. It's these, like, webisodes that Grape Nuts sponsors and does to advertise, and it's sort of like these little cute little short movies, and this one's about the office bully. Standing up to the office bully. The office. It's a lot like high school. You've got clicks. Sorry, this meeting's for people in accounting only. 
You've got detention. Don't make any plans this weekend, Jones. You're working both days. And you've even got bullies. You're good with letters, right? Don't you uh, alphabetize those for me. I got paintball this weekend. You know, Jay, bullies are often more frightened of us than we are of them, like bats and raccoons. And if you heed these simple nuggets of wisdom, they can be properly defanged. First off, identify the type of office bully you're dealing with. Different types require different strategies. Is he a constant critic? Garamond Font, eh? What are you, uh, we too good for Times New Roman now? <laughs> or maybe he's a credit hog. The, uh, good ideas were all mine, sir. Jason did run the spell check. But in this case, I think we're dealing with a pusher. Someone who constantly shoves off his work on hey, you. Need those files, Jay. Chop, chop. Let's go. File time. With the pusher, it's best to confront him head on. Most bullies aren't used to being challenged. Oh, well, Jason, you're. Uh... Oh, I love it. So cute. <sighs> and you were also in another one. I didn't have time to show both, but what yeah. was the other one called again? It's about growing a mustache. Growing a mustache. Every yeah. guy wants to grow. Uh, Kenny Maine does a great job hosting those. Uh, the, the point of it is like, don't just grow a mustache out by itself. You got to let the beard come in and then shave it down to a mustache. And tell us a little bit real quick about the home improvement thing that you do with Kirk on DIY. Oh, so, so Kirk and I have this little series called House Place. Uh, you can see it on YouTube uh, where he plays, he plays the host of a, of a home improvement show. And, uh, and I play Ted Seeger, the, uh, the contractor who really knows nothing. So it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of a good. Wife, his wife has these weird his, sexual escapades yeah, with people. His wife yeah. is constantly cheating on him. And, like he doesn't get it. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, where's your wife? Well, she's in Hawaii with her swingers club. You know, yeah. <laughs> like is that is that cool? Are all wives with their swingers club in Hawaii? Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Kirk's a hilarious guy, and yeah, we he just is. wrote. Uh, he just wrote. I should say he wrote. Uh, three new episodes that we're going to start shooting and getting them out there, and so we're, I'm very excited. One so is about fun. one is about growing a mustache to be taken seriously as a contractor. It, it, every contractor yeah. should have one. Mike, yeah. do they have questions about grape nuts? I have a question. Kirk Zipfold wrote that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh cool. Yeah. Uh, I saw the other one, the other Kenny Main one, where he's the mustache guy. Oh, he, oh, Kirk he didn't, write, didn't write, grape. write grape nuts. He wrote the DIY series. Remember when Kirk was here and they did yeah. that funny little house, house series? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a spoof off of This Old House, yeah. if cool. you guys remember what that show is. It's a spoof. Right. Mike, um, I'm, I want to give you, like, a couple more comments. Many questions. I okay. Um, I don't know if this is about... Th this seems like somebody that knows you, and if you don't know how to do this, this isn't a thing. But uh, Lilet or Lilet wants to know if you actually do a Christopher Walken impression. Oh. Is that something you do? No. Okay, then never mind. I, I, I don't. Um, uh, <laughs> then uh, we do have a couple of questions. Senor Shudder wants to know that, Matt, you were in the film Father vs. Son, and you play the yeah. extreme adultery host. Yes. The question is, really? <laughs> yes, really. Joe Ballerini, an incredibly talented writer, he, uh, he has this, this movie. It hasn't even come out yet. I'm actually going to uh, see a screening of it on Monday. Uh, but I play, the, it's the host of Cheaters, basically. Uh, but we call it extreme adultery <laughs> and so it's all about catching these people and uh w one of the main characters unsuspectingly is with this woman uh who is uh, cheating on her husband he has no idea and we break into their love making and uh, it's a very funny bit in the movie but father versus son is what it's called and uh and so yeah i wear the black with like the black leather jacket like the guy wears on cheaters Oh yeah, I just loves that guy. Job. Yeah. That show, Cheaters, scares me. Mm -hmm. Like I think someone's gonna get killed or something. That oh, yeah. scary show. I want to give a quick shout out to Big Rich three one one to Poster something bag and Dan GCN and um, Basball. How you doing? I hope we didn't scare you away. I saw the chat room was scary tonight. Um, Brian T and H three three T T Y. I do not have weird lips. I have fantastic lips. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I don't miss anything. I just want you kids to know out there. I don't miss a trick. <laughs> Mama's watching you. All right? And I did uncover with my hair, so back off. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and pull together those adjectives. Mike, how are we doing? We're good. We have a ton. Okay, great. Um, before... give, them, give them one more chance, and I'm going to run his demo reel before oh, yeah, we yeah, do totally. that. Oh, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Um, what were you going to say? Just uh, your, your alleged sister, Robin Michael, My wanted us to ask, because I'm not convinced yet, by the way, but uh, uh, they wanted to ask to us to ask Matt about uh, Jennifer Aniston. Is there oh, a connection? Oh, gosh. Okay, Robin, hmm. do you know Jennifer Aniston, Matt? I do not know Jennifer Have Aniston. Have you ever met her? I've never met her, are although you? I wish I had. Robin, are you satisfied? Robin, may I just say this? <laughs> Please feel better. Sorry that you're sick. <laughs> and Rebecca has fantastic lips. <laughs> 
And Robin, thanks for defending me in the chat room. Okay, so I want you guys to see Matt's theatrical reel because he's been in so much stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at that while Mike's getting all the adjectives ready. Jenny, you got a sec? What's up? Linda here decided to have a crack party in her El Camino. That's nice. Yeah, the problem is she likes to keep her stash with a sun note shine. You up for a strip search? That's some rookie. The only female uniform here. Oh my God. Yes, I will marry you. That's mine. Oh, thank God. You know, in a good foundation like a marriage based on truth and openness, well, that'll last you years to come. But a bad foundation like a marriage based on drugs and group sex, well, that's not gonna last you six months. How's your wife? Ah, she's in Mexico with her swingers club. All right. Could you remove your shirt, please? I'd be more comfortable if we just went over the shirt. Remove your shirt. See, I did this challenge last night. Yeah, I don't care. Right. Whoa. Well, your cholesterol is 700. The challenge was an egg eating contest. Oh, well, that's great. I can't pass you. What is it, Terrence? I met a lady at church. Oh. Look, I've got to make a good home for Otis. Just put the gun down, okay? Stay back. Mrs. Caffrey, please. Stay back. I don't want to hurt them all. That's so cool. Oh. The cold case one, I love that scene. That's a great scene. That's a great, yeah. that was a great show. Is that show still it's on? It's still on the air, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was blessed to be on that show. That was, that's a great show. I love all the shows you got to do, the three whole three pages of them. <laughs> Some actresses don't work that much. <laughs> Uh, well, it was fun working with Carla Gugino, right? Carla Gugino? Yeah. yeah. Uh, on Threshold. That was that show, Threshold. Now, was that like some kind of pilot that we... That no, it was a on? series that actually uh, went, uh, but it didn't go very long. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was fun. That was one of those uh, awesome, you know, auditions. You got to be uh, this innocent guy. Yeah. Turns out to be like, you know. Really evil. So, yeah, it was really cool. And, and The Loop, another show that didn't make it too long. Gosh, John. But you know what I just got to do, which is awesome? What? Uh, I got offered a part on Lie to Me. What? Really? Which, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, with Tim Roth. It, uh, so it, Tim, uh, his character Cal Lightman goes to Las Vegas. I hope I'm not giving too much away. Goes to Las Vegas, yeah, and uh, and in there, there's uh, the Poker World Championship, and uh, and I play a guy named Matt Corboy. When are you shooting that? Are I've you, already shot, shot it last shot week. It? Yeah. Oh, cool. So I play a guy named Matt Corboy who hosts the Poker World Championship. Okay, so you guys uh, look for that. And do you have anything else coming up that you want to plug? Or uh, ten more episodes of Modern Family. Yes, oh, I wish. We're gonna oh, I wish. Write Modern Family, you guys. <laughs> write ABC and write ABC, NBC, and CBS. Tell them you want more comedy. The comedy yeah. world is dying. Okay, us comedian people need to work. Me and Mike need to work. Mike. <laughs> yeah. Come on. What, we what got, got a lot of adjectives tonight. I was writing them down fast and furious, and we can't use all of them. Okay. Uh, the ones I was able to jot down and give the semifinal cut, uh, there were eight. I'm going to try and get it down to five or six. Okay. Uh, once again, we have a very uh, verbose crowd, very literate. I'm guessing they had the uh, thesaurus widget open in the corner. Um, why don't we go with, uh, and, and again, this is in no particular order. Uh, uh, Jizz Muffin came mm. in with Envious. Mm. Like Envious. Uh, we'll go with uh, Simpson King Obnoxious. Uh, I don't actually know what this yep. means, and I didn't decide to look it up, uh, but 1.21 gigawatts decided to chime in with Decidious. Decidious. Hmm. What does it mean? The password is Decidious. Uh, so that's three, I guess. Um, let's see. Sean, very creative name, uh, came in with Fluttering. We'll go with Fluttering. Oh, Craig uh, with Scrumptious. I believe that's five. That is five. And then uh, we'll throw in a, a sixth one for the wild card slot. Uh, we will go with um, uh, with apologies to Vegs and apologies to Shudder. We're going to go with Dying Breed with Hormonal. Which is how I'm feeling tonight after I read the chat room. And I think the breed. chat room is hormonal. I think it's weird in there tonight. You guys are making me want to cry. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can take it. I have thick skin. I'm Italian. Come on. Don't cry. They have your sister hostage. Oh, they do? Yeah. My sister's tough. She can handle them. Your sister does not get this part of the show. She's chiming in right now. She has no idea. Okay. Shall we explain it? Uh, yeah, explain it to her. Okay. <clears throat> 
here's what we do. We have the guest on, and we give them some kind of phony product, something lying around the studio. And then we give them five or six or seven adjectives decided on by the chat room. And then we spring it upon the guest who doesn't know any better. And then they have to sell the product doing an impromptu audition slash commercial with the product using only the adjectives provided by the chat room. And usually it goes pretty well. We have fun with it. Cool. Well, whenever Matt's ready, Matt, if you need a moment before, please do. No, let's just Take do it. it. All right, let's do it. Give it up for Matt now. Woo. Are you sick of drinking delicious wine from Sonoma or Napa or Chile? <laughs> Are you envious of those people who get to drink scrumptious $2 wine from Trader Joe's? Because <laughs> if you are, now and only now, go to your local Trader Joe's and put $2 down on the counter to that obnoxious person behind the counter <laughs> who is called a checkout person because they're so obnoxious there. They're like, welcome to Trader Joe's, what can I help you with? Anyway, you can drink disgusting, horrible $2 wine for only $2. Right now, get this scrumptious wine to get your heart fluttering with deliciousness that's not so delicious in two buck chuck is what we call this, Charles Shaw. You know, people used to think that it was only $2 because it had a, a cork in the top and they served it on Delta Airlines. Totally <laughs> not true. It's not true, it's an urban legend. Uh, and, um, and it's not true because this city is up in arms about that. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, if you're feeling hormonal and have $2 in your wallet, go to Trader Joe's and put it down and I'm get going. yourself a bottle of $2 Chuck. Two buck Chuck, Charles Shaw now at Trader Joe's. I'm going, I'm going <laughs> right after the show. You sold to the lady in gray with the cleavage. All right, you guys, uh, thank you so much, Pantera fan, from the bottom of my heart for all your love and donations. Um, and you guys, we're going to stick around for the post show. We're going to be with Matt, so you can IMDB and figure out what else you want to ask him. Talk to me and Mike. Talk to us about whatever we got going on, if we have anything going on at all. Um, <laughs> and um, we want to say good night to all of you guys from commercial break here at the stream.tv. But please stick around because we have the game show coming up, and we're doing this 24-hour telethon. And we're going to be in the post show with Matt Corboy, who has been in a ton of stuff, and you're going to want to talk to him. So stick around, you guys. Have a great night. <laughs>